Are these our gojis? They are not. What's wrong with ours? Your alpaca ate them all. Oh. All of them. <laughs> what a glowing endorsement. First of all, Gerald is our alpaca. <laughs> it's not my alpaca. He's eating my gojis. Okay. They're going to be nice in the salad. Right no, here, right? don't, 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 don't. Could you put it down? Get out of my kitchen. Okay. Oops. Oh. We're good here, right? Yeah, we're great. Tell Madam Secretary lunch is in five. I will collect our alpha female post haste. And what happened to the Tesseract after that? It's bottom of the ocean. It fell out of the plane after I had to crash it. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask, why did you have to crash the plane anyway? There's <sighs> bombs on board. Bombs on board. And you couldn't have jumped out of the plane before you crashed it? How long did you fight these guys? About, uh, two, two or three hours. Hours? The Chitauri, the suckiest army in the galaxy. Why didn't you just blow up the mothership? We didn't know that was a thing. You didn't know that was a thing! Everyone knows! Hey! There we go. <laughs> All clear. Which way? Oh, you say something? I said I want to claw my eyes out. But unfortunately, it wouldn't do any good because I already saw the awfulness. Will you focus? I'm focused. This pretty place is about to get uglified real quick by a bunch of freaking elves. Do you know when I saw all these people die? So this is a little bit difficult for me, okay? So why don't you reach down deep inside and try and find a small ounce of humanity? Just give me the thingy. Just give me the thingy. Just give me the thingy. I didn't, didn't even want to come here. You're living all these repressed memories. I can't get it together. You're embarrassing. All right, which way? You don't know? You used to frickin' live here! For 1,500 years, not forever. That way, I think. Yeah, maybe. We are dead. We are so, so dead. I get it. It's nutty. It's crazy-making, because you start worrying about a legacy. You know, you, you want to leave him a better world, and then you realize you haven't done all that much to give him one. What's your name again? Potts. Potts? Yeah. You want to come work for me, Potts? I'm a little tied up in futures right now. Warm your butt cheeks up. Warm up your butt cheeks. Cut there. Copy that. There you go. Yeah, copy. Yeah. <laughs> I broke it. Yo. <laughs> oh! No, no, Brian, you had it. All right, here we go. The thing about time travel. <laughs> I can't believe I made a whole movie with this thing on. <laughs> Yeah, does it look cool or it doesn't feel cool, but if it looks cool, that's what matters. Do you have any idea what's coursing through my veins right now? Sunions? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Orange soda? We are getting the whole team, aren't we? A duck! Good <laughs> You don't have to deal with her? Ten years of this Being able to do this new version of Thor, it's hugely liberating and, 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 and fun. We had a um, big sort of fat suit, which I think was sort of 60 or 70 pounds. This little move. Yeah, yeah, that's the shimmy. It was the hottest I've ever been. <laughs> How's that feel? Oh, I mean, amazing. Looks like it's in the right <laughs> And we had, obviously, the beard, the hair, and I had these things that go in the mouth that kind of plump out my cheeks a bit, which sort of had a little effect on the voice as well, but probably in a good way. It was, it was a different thought. Hey, my name's Thor. I'm 22 years old. Live on Asgard, and I like sugar. We're shooting a superhero film, and here's one of the most recognizable superheroes, but he's just turned into a new character. What Chris does with that character and how it just kind of has this shift. His excitement was really palpable. <laughs> he had been playing the character for a while and really wanted to find something new. He has such dexterity as a talent. He's incredibly funny. He has just really lovely energy. Is he asleep? No, no. I'm pretty sure he's dead.
I think I'm a very lucky guy. It's an amazing, super emotional, beautiful thing. It was really a joy. And the rest is history. Avengers Endgame. I don't know how you're gonna get us through all of that. Don't worry. She's got help. It was really beautiful to feel this sort of Marvel sisterhood, you know, and we're all coming from so many different films that we all came together. It's kind of like, I see what you do. I know your powers. Okay, show me what you got. And then we just clicked and we were just like cheering each other on. Everyone's just kind of taking their turns, moving around, trying to help each other out. It was so fun. You share exactly. you know, this connection. So there's a connection without ever having met. It's, cool. it's a really cool thing about the whole battle. That day was insane. <laughs> we were all in it together, and it felt electric. It was really, really cool. You know, I normally don't watch playback on the monitor, but I wanted to see that reveal of all the women of Marvel, and I thought it was really powerful and really exhilarating, and I was thinking of all of the young girls in the audience who will probably feel really inspired by that in one way or another, so it was a really nice thing to be a part of. I actually think that in some weird, and it is a very emotional thing, but some weird, twisted up, fateful way, this character who, you know, has searched her whole life for a purpose actually finds her purpose. And it's like this amazing, super emotional, beautiful thing. You know what I've become. I don't judge people on their worst mistakes. Maybe you should. You didn't. I feel very fortunate. It's been an incredible gift as an actor to be able to come back to a character that's as complex as Natasha. I think there's a, kind of a lot to explore there, and that is so exciting. Peggy has a career and she has a lot of self-respect and she's pretty sick and tired of lots of men kind of not taking her seriously in the army and, and you know, playing around with her. I think Peggy relates to someone really fighting for what they believe in and really having to struggle all the time to prove themselves and she being the only woman in this environment knows exactly what that feels like. It's not just the normal everyday love story. There's something else. In the same way that we love Steve because he exhibits some sort of determination and selflessness, it's the same thing that attracts her to him. Steve learned a lot from Peggy Carter. If you go back and look at the first Avenger, that is the essential relationship that I think turned him into who he is today, it turned him into Captain America. Her sense of integrity, her call to action, are all qualities that have been ingrained in Steve and are, are his best qualities. And they come from an uh, example from Peggy. And so I think it was critical that, that her character embody those essential qualities because he wouldn't be who he is without them. I'm gonna need a rain check on that dance. A week next Saturday at the Stork Club. You got it. Eight o'clock on the dock. Don't you dare be late. Robert has a whole career of great work behind him, and he was at a point in his life and his career where he was ready to break out and do something really big and exciting. Sean was in love with the idea of Downey playing the part, and we all felt so sure about him on a creative level. Because he wasn't instantly a slam dunk approval, I suggested we have screen tests. I remember walking in with Robert Downey Jr. the day of the tests, he was laughing and in great spirits and completely at ease. And he got in front of the camera and started saying the lines. I assure you the day weapons are no longer needed to keep the peace. I'll happily transist to manufacturing bricks and beams for baby hospitals, making hemp pants and the like. But until that time, can I get you a drink? 
I don't want to call it an out-of-body experience, but it was one of those rushes that I'm sure like somebody would feel if they're about to play a big sporting arena, playing for the ring or something like that. It was just like, am I going to pass out or am I going to nail this? On that day that Robert screen tested, it was clear that there was no one else who can play that part. It was magic. It was exactly the feeling as a casting director with Kevin, with John, with everyone, that, that we all wanted to have that feeling like we have it. This is it. This is Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Captain Iron Man. Impossible question without the context of who's making it. You know what I mean? Pizza. Oh, I can't answer this. I'm probably going to take... Well, that's an impossible... See, I, I, I just stumped myself. Pizza. Uh, pizza. I don't know. I need to know who's making these things. Pizza. Hamburgers. Because can I have both? Yes. Great, both. Uh, workout. Workout. <laughs> that's impossible. Nah. Work, work out lately. Both, depending on the time, tends to be workout. Well, what are the stakes here? I mean, like, is there a job coming around the corner that I have to work out? Obviously, I want the nap, but, you know, if, I, if, if we're going to start filming in a week, I kind of go to the gym.